everyone. I'm Captain Logan, and joining me this time is the Day Ghost. Hello, hey, Austin. Everyone. How are you, sir? I am pretty good, and I got my uh, Geek Solution merch here, ready to go. Oh, cool. Thanks, thanks, guys. Just in case you forget what channel you're watching, you can just look to the uh, what the right of your screen, and you'll I'm see... I'm like HBO Max, you know, like you click on something and you get an ad for HBO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at least there's other things going on at the same time. <laughs> Today we're going to chat a little bit about the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Uh, I, I guess a show that originally was just going to be called that, but then they felt they need to put Terminator in the front of it in case people didn't know what it was. Uh, this show aired in uh, 2007, 2008, and was only on for two years, and uh, very famously ends on a cliffhanger uh, and didn't get to get finished. So we're going to be talking about part of something that we'll never, sadly, be able to talk about the rest of. And Austin, that was the reason I never finished this. I had the same thing with this that I had with Dollhouse and some other things from the time uh, where I started it and then fell off it somewhere and then found out that it never really finished. Uh, I don't know if Dollhouse sort of kind of had a last episode or not. I always assumed it didn't. Uh, but this I knew for sure uh, was supposed to end on a big cliffhanger and uh, it w really irked people that they didn't get to finish it. And so I just never bothered going back to it. And then you and I uh, started talking about Terminator and we decided to start doing uh, commentaries and uh, I was like, you know, I really want to finally finish that show. Uh, so I sat down from the beginning and I started watching through it. And uh, we both have now watched it. And uh, now you didn't see this at all when it was on, right? Like this is this uh, is your no, first remember, watch of this. I remember at all. seeing previews for it, and I was like, ah, it's probably stupid. I'm not going to watch <laughs> that. Now I wish I could go back and you know watch it. <laughs> Yeah, but, except the the knife turn would be a lot harder if you were invested in it as true. it was on. But I also didn't know it was going to end on a huge cliffhanger. I just figured it did and had that hope. <laughs> Yeah, you sent me a message at one point, like halfway through two, you're like, I really hope this doesn't end on a cliffhanger, and I was like, mm -hmm. I know yeah, that it, it was does. Yeah, like halfway through the last episode, and I was like, oh god, oh god, it's gonna be rough. <laughs> uh, so, if you've not seen this show, it's a weird thing to try to recommend, because uh, I will come right out and say, I think overall, this is a really, really good show. Uh, it's a really, it's a really solid show. Uh, it really understands and appreciates, uh, has a lot of reverence for the Terminator brand. I think in some cases it, uh, it, it takes characters and tweaks them in such a way where I like them better than I did even before. Uh, and it kind of does the thing I'm always, I'm always saying, Austin, where you can, you can make something work, you just have to make it work. Uh, this as a premise for a TV show should not work. People don't think that there's enough legs in this as a movie franchise anymore. <laughs> And it doesn't get away from the, the premise of Terminator 2 like the movies can't get away from and yet manages to make that serialized for 30-something episodes and hurts your feelings when it's not finished at the, at the end of it. Um, this remains still, by the end of, well, by and, and we will spoil things, of course. Uh, th this is a spoiler cast. By the end of this show, yeah, the premise does finally change a little bit. But for the majority of this show, it is still Terminator 2. It is still uh, Sarah and John Connor on the run, trying to keep John alive while Terminators from the future come back and kill him. It is still that, and yet it works as a series, and it really shouldn't. Like, that's 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 absolutely amazing to me. Um, and so, yeah, it's, a, like I said, it's a weird thing to try to recommend because, um, I, I'm so impressed with what it's able to accomplish, and I think it's a lot smarter than a lot of other things that were on at the time, uh, out of this material, which, which is, which is amazing, and I'm not saying that the, I mean, because the first two Terminator movies I would also describe as smart things, um, but that as a franchise does not have that reputation anymore, so it's just amazing going back and looking at this and going, ah, this is kind of what I wish it had been, and, uh, at the same time, it's it's a little pointless to go back to it now because yeah. it doesn't have a resolution and it feels like we're kind of just getting started. Yeah, well, I was thinking about it today and I was like, I think this might, I'm like, I, like, I, this could have been my second favorite Terminator thing, I think, but ultimately I think the first movie beats it up because this doesn't end. But yeah. before I, before I forget, I know this yeah. isn't what we're doing, but I wrote my, my sign on how I felt about this show because I didn't know <laughs> if I'd ever get a chance to do this again. 
<laughs> oh, cool. And we, I mean, we don't even do those anymore. We don't even write those out. Why did you just put that on an envelope? Yeah, I, I couldn't find a blank piece of paper, so I wrote it on a letter. <laughs> oh, well, well, let's go ahead and do that then. Um, I didn't prepare one because I didn't realize this was homework I was supposed to do for my own show. But Austin, uh, how did Terminator the Sarah Connor Chronicles make you feel? So this show made me feel like I shouldn't watch anything with Summer Glau because I'll end up loving it and it'll be canceled prematurely. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, now two does not a pattern make, but uh, it sure feels like that. And she's and I also interestingly my, playing kind of a similar character too. It. They're not on a stick, but I can, <laughs> but I can when we get there. <laughs> It's amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was, I was uh, kind of spinning this more as a spoiler cast, so I didn't really think to I didn't I, even I get never, my sign out. I didn't out, know but... if I'd get the chance again, so <laughs> I jumped on it. Oh, sure, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I don't. My, my sign's over there. I could get up and go grab it, but I mean, right away, I, I would, I would flip it. I'm, I'm feeling it. I mean, this is, this is a wonderful show. Yeah, so... I got complaints. I got issues. We'll I, talk about I it. Am, but... I am feeling it. <laughs> See, I couldn't decide if you were going with a color thing or with a quality thing, because the <laughs> red one is good and the green one is bad, but green means good and red means bad. So you threw me for a whole loop with your box choices. Well, those were the only that were, those were the only ones I could find. It took me forever to find something green. <laughs> well, I was like, oh, I, TMNT, that should be green. Pull it out. It's not green enough. <laughs> I, I just really appreciate your going through the effort for that. Um, but I'm going to drive you crazy because I could do it even without getting up from my desk. So if so, so the, the, the feeling side would be the octagonal key from Smallville. And the uh, not feeling it sign would be the phone from Adam West Batman. <laughs> Didn't even have to get out of my chair. Took me like twenty minutes to put that together. <laughs> I'm like, where's my drumstick? I'll like tie them together onto the stick. Well, Didn't work I, out. I for one was wildly entertained. Let's <laughs> set the stage for a minute uh, for where TV is when this is on. I uh, and then and then start getting into uh, our discussion and critique a little bit. Um, it's a weird time for TV. Uh, in 2007, we have the writer's strike. Uh, which um, obviously ended a lot of uh, seasons prematurely. Uh, people the, the people weren't allowed to uh, you know write anything because the writers had to go on strike. Uh, this was the reason that uh, Joss Whedon made uh, Doctor Horrible because uh, he had nothing better to do. So they bankrolled uh, their own project and um, put out the, uh, the 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 first internet musical. And this happens during that whole thing. So uh, if I'm understanding it right, uh, that first season was supposed to be longer, and then it got sh cut short because of the writer's strike. Oh, that makes sense, because it is really short. It's only like uh, nine it's episodes. It's nine episodes, think. which is not a normal order. Uh, if you get a short season back in that day, uh, the, the least you're going to get is 10, but you're more likely to get 12. Yeah, that's what I would have thought. Yeah, it's like somewhere around 10 to 13. Now, that's true. 13, ha yeah, I wasn't even thinking about it. 13 happens even even more often, or did back then. Uh, these days, we make a lot of shorter things in the first place because uh, a lot of network is going closer to streaming models. And so we've started getting smart, and we're looking at the, at the British, and we're going, oh, you don't necessarily have to make 22 episodes of television. Uh, and we'll talk about that because... That's my biggest problem with the second season is that it, it is that they felt the need to give it a 22 episode order. Um, Sarah Connor Chronicles is a mid season replacement, so it starts in the sp in, in the spring instead of the fall, and had the biggest advertising campaign, uh, one of the biggest advertising campaigns ever for a mid season replacement. Uh, I oh, remember wow. the Super Bowl ads um, for for that show. Uh, See, it was, I was everywhere. When this show started, so I was watching like SpongeBob. <laughs> I was working at the mortuary. Uh, when this when the show started, and uh, I I was I remember the hype. It was it was interestingly huge, and it's easy to forget that because this show is kind of 
you know, fallen by the wayside, people have forgotten about it. Um, I think people that watched it, you know, a lot of us really like the show, of course, and miss it and wish it had it had been able to finish, but I don't think it has that same reputation that Firefly does, where, like, everybody still talks about Firefly, and, or at least a lot of people do, and um, when whenever a, uh, you'd think that every time a Terminator movie comes out and people aren't happy with it, Somebody would come out and be like, I wish we could, we could go back to the Saracana Chronicles. But what you hear a lot more often is, that series is dead, it's time to let it die. Uh, this, even as old as, as it is, is still a really great case for, no, nah, there's still stuff to do here. There really yeah. is. Well, and I, uh, the thing I found interesting is, is that there's aspects of the later movies in this show. I don't mm -hmm. know if you picked up on, on some of that stuff, but like there were ideas... Um, like some of them, obviously, with like Terminator Three came out before this. Yeah, but like and Salvation came out a little bit after, and obviously Genesis and Dark Fate. Yeah, I, I'm interested to see. We'll get into it a little bit. Uh, what what things you're thinking of, and if and if I'm thinking of any of those, because uh, one or two things from Salvation that I that I that I thought of. Yeah, um, but I. Let me go back for a second and say I don't know for sure if I'm right about the mid uh, about about the uh, writer strike thing, but that's I'm pretty sure that's what that was. I don't know why else it would have been cut short. And I also read yeah, that well, the, there there were a couple episodes time, yeah. that they were supposed to do uh, at the end of that that they had to um, push over to the uh, beginning of the second season. So I don't know why else it would have been it would have been cut short. Um, I think probably. It was the the uh, the whole thing with um, again spoiler cast the whole thing with Cameron uh, the 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 robot girl in this uh, who's supposed to protect John Connor g uh, going off half cocked and trying to murder him I imagine that would have been the cliffhanger uh, or that first episode or the T one thousand one would have been the cliffhanger. Yeah. I bet that the, would have been the cliffhanger. The same episode. Yeah, they yeah they are. But what I'm saying is you could have you could have reorganized it where the cliffhanger was oh god she's coming. Or it yeah. could have been the actual end of that episode, where oh, oh, I, I what you're saying. Yeah, oh yeah. this this uh, this this woman that that we that seems to be uh, trying to establish what will become Skynet, which we'll find out later actually is not what's going on, and we'll never know what that was about. But anyway, <laughs> um, but but I uh, but she is actually a Terminator. Oh no! What what like 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 what exactly is going on? Um, that also would have been a great cliffhanger, and and serves as a big as a big cliffhanger between those first two episodes of the second season. But anyway, um, the the whole f I don't want to I don't want to say format of the show. Uh, the structure of this ends up feeling just really awkward, uh, and it's kind of nobody's fault. Like they're they're stuck not getting as long of a season as they wanted the first season, and then the second season they, in my opinion, made the mistake of making uh too decompressed because they were very confident they would get a third season. And I probably, if the show continued, would not be complaining about ho how slow that second season is. But because, as much anyway, because I do think it's a little too slow. But when you get to the end of that second season and you find out that they don't get to make anymore, uh, it's a lot more frustrating because if they had been less confident about that and they had given, and they had done the thing where you kind of get an ending, but you could keep going if you wanted to, right? Then they could have done what I think they should have done in that second season, which is split it into uh, basically two halves and have, uh, you know, one arc for that first half and one arc for that second half. And again, I may not be saying, that's all in, in retrospect, that's all in hindsight. I may not be saying that if the show had continued, but Austin, and, and I guess I'm just leading right away with a big complaint, but it, we just finished it and this is foremost on my mind. Um, you didn't need 22 episodes to tell a story you, you told in that second season. Uh, the pacing is not bad. You just didn't need that many episodes. Yeah, no, that, that is true. It is like a bit more filler, I think, in season two, while season one's a lot more uh, like straight to the point. And I actually didn't know that about um, like how their first season was uh, cut short, but it makes so much more sense now. Yeah. Because there's a lot of like setup stuff you get in season one that's paid off in uh, season two. And then we get past it pretty quickly, you know, like they, like they, it's weird how they don't really feel like two separate pieces at all. Like, like I, like I realized that, you know, the seasons are very often building on each other, but like the beginning of that second season really does feel like the end of the first because it was. And I didn't know that until I, until I read about that later. Um, 
But yeah, why don't I, I guess we should just uh, before I get too ahead of myself, uh, just start talking about some of the kind of basic premise stuff and the, the and the characters in this show. Um, so we. Of, of course, I'd uh, write out Terminator 3 entirely. So this is a direct sequel to 2. And uh, some people, I guess we should start from this place. Um, some people complained at the beginning of the show that Sarah Connor didn't seem to quite be the same character. Uh, did you have that? Like, how do you feel about this as a sequel to Terminator 2? Do you buy these as the same characters? Or have we kind of tweaked things where this feels like a slightly different universe to you? Um, yeah, no, I didn't really have a problem with uh, uh, Lena Headey, the actress who plays Sarah Connor. She felt pretty, like, pretty natural in that role to me. And, um, like, I don't know, it made sense because uh, we kind of started in a different place with her where she's settled down. And I feel like after Terminator 2 where she, you know, thinks that she stopped Judgment Day, I think it makes more sense for her to go that route. And then obviously as the show goes on, she kind of goes more into where she was in Terminator 2. Yeah, um, I can see the argument that that doesn't, that the performance is just quite a bit different, so she doesn't look like she was necessarily ever as paranoid as or crazed as the Sarah Connor from Terminator 2 was at one time. Um, but I gotta say, if it is tweaked, if it is a slightly retcon version of that character, I like her better. Yeah. Well, and so I don't mind. Like, I see both sides to that. I don't know if I even agree with that, but if that is true, I don't think I care for the sake of this show. I love her so much. Uh, well, I mean, that, that actress is is incredible, and she knows who that character is from day one and never fall. Like, there is. Let me say this real quick. There's no finding foot like your footing for this show. It knows from the beginning exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah, no, the very first episode, I was like, oh, there's no, uh, there's no, like, kind of trouble with it getting started. Like, it just goes like that. I was just really impressed with her for, like, right away, knowing exactly who this character is. And it does not look like an easy role to play. Uh, and I think their John Connor is that way, too. Yeah. Oh, I really liked their John Connor in this show. Um, like, it's obviously a bit hard to compare with uh, T2 since he's so much younger, but I think... Like, this version might be my favorite, John Connor. Um, it's... I, and, and, and I like how difficult those are to compare because that's a kid that's grown up a lot, right? So, and, yeah. and like, that, I, for me, is very easy to buy. And, you like, very smartly, this show is about how uh, he has to learn to be the guy that he's supposed to be in the future. Or is he going to get there? Uh, and, of course, we'll have to talk about all the, um, the the free will versus predestination stuff and the alternate timeline thing, because that's the coolest idea in the show. Um, but, I think, uh, but he is, there, there's this kind of question throughout, especially uh, midway through the second season, about, um, sorry about plumbing, um, <laughs> about whether... So what I was saying is about about whether uh, maybe John... there's a Terminator in the house could be a T one thousand going through the pipes. Anybody else hearing uh, ominous droning music? <laughs> oh, oh god, oh god, it's coming through the pipes. Anyway, so um, the heck was I talking about? John, John Connor. There's this question throughout throughout the series about uh, whether or not John is going to uh, actually become the uh, version that he's supposed to be in the future, where he's the savior of mankind. Like there, there is the possibility that he goes some other way. Uh, he is conflicted because he is uh, obviously interested in having a uh, regular life, but he's not Smallville Clark Kent about it. Right? There's no whininess in this character. I mean, there are points where he's upset because uh, his, you know, mother doesn't want him to take the kinds of risks that he has to in order to, you know, go out and date and have a good time and, like, be a teenager. Um, but at, but uh, he, he, he's, he's, never, he's never irritating. He's, <laughs> like, like he, he, never, he never seems like a whiny, bratty kid. Uh, it's just internal conflict, right? It's just uh, those, those two parts are at odds. And he always agrees with his mother um, at the same time as like like wishing that he could do something else and so he is 
he's just angry at the world more than he is his his mom, right? Like, no, you're right, but I also want to be, you know, a, a, a real person. And, it, like, if we can't, like, like, be human beings, what is the point of stopping Skynet? Yeah. Uh, all of that is handled really, really well. Yeah, no, it, uh, I really like how they handle, like, John's whole connection with humanity in this show. I like that his name's not in the title. Yeah. And I, I, I like, they're both, like, uh, very clearly dual protagonists. I mean, it is the John, the Sarah and John show, but it does, but it, but it also does feel more like her show. Now, I'm not sure how we would have handled that in the third season, because at that point, they're going to be split up entirely. Yeah, and well, I they would have, have been theory sitting in that would have gone. different timelines. Yeah, it was. A, we'll ha- we'll have to get to all of that. But anyway, yeah. I, I just kind of wanted to break down like ma- like main characters real, real quick. Um, well, and um, you were talking about you know uh, whether John can uh, you know live up to who he's supposed to be. That also leads to one of our other main characters, which is uh, Derek Reese, Kyle Reese's brother, that comes in in the show because he's like worried throughout. Um, like his time on the show that uh, like John isn't going to grow up to be the John Connor that he's supposed to be. Yeah. uh, Which gets fascinating when you get to the cliffhanger because there's always questions about, I'm trying not to get too far ahead of myself. There's always questions (laughs) in this show, Austin. There's so many episodes. It's like so many different things to talk about. There's a lot to talk about. Um, (laughs) There's always a question about what, character you're really looking at when they come back from the future because we will discover in the second season and again i think this is so interesting that i uh, the the present is set in a way that the future isn't like that the whole the whole idea of no future but what we make makes so much more sense in this universe when you have this show because what it suggests is every i uh, Every time the future gets changed, because we know that you can change the future in the Terminator universe, but there also is a predestination paradox at the same time. That's the big paradox with Terminator, right? Is is, is the idea that, okay, if you have stuff from the future that has to come back in order to create itself, how in the world does that work? And so, um, like, so, so, like, that's that's the big that that's the big confusing paradox with Terminator. But also, there's all these things that I uh, have to like set themselves up in the first place. But you also seem to be able to change things. So, how do those things to go to go together? And we're so thoughtful in the show. We think about all of that stuff and like, 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 how, how do we make it make sense? Well, the answer is uh, every time you change something in the past, it creates an alternate future. But everybody from the future comes back to the same initial timeline. So it's like sp- is the way I'm interpreting it. I think that's what it's supposed to be: is that we are constantly from the present splitting off into a bunch of different. So, so every time you go back and change something, you're not creating a different present timeline, you're creating a different future, but the present somehow remains solid, even though it can be, you see what I'm saying? And I I don't think I've ever really seen that done before, exactly like that, it's cool. So when people from the future come back, they will interact with other people from the future and find out that they're not from the same future. And that's how you kind of get around that paradox. And it's fascinating. So the question with Reese is when he comes back and he's worried that John's not going to become the John that uh, they need in the future to lead them, does that version know... Because we know that he and his girlfriend are from different versions of the future. So when he comes back, does he know that John is going to have a time skip? Or is it even a different future where it happened differently? Like, I have no idea. (laughs) I'm not sure, but it's funny with that because... uh, My brain is broken. Season one, you get, uh, like, John goes and he sees, like, his dad when he was a little kid. And I was like, wait a minute. In, like, the original movie, he, like, talks about how he was born after the war. And then I was like, okay, but then Judgment Day moves. So then, Mm -hmm. and then they brought up that idea where like the future changes, but then they don't. And it was like, 
<laughs> blew my brain. <laughs> and what's cool is they're not just doing like cool plot twists for the sake of plot twists. Like they know all of that is confusing, and they're thinking about it, and they're and and and, and they're trying to figure out how all of the stuff that we had in canon in the first place can even fit together and make any sense. And they're making it more complicated, but also making it make more sense all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, like, it never hits that point where you're just like, I, I have no idea what's happening. Like, it still all makes sense in the moment. And, like, when I, like, obviously if I stop to think about it maybe too much, it's maybe a little confusing, but it's just time travel in general. <laughs> it doesn't feel as convoluted as some of the other Terminator movies. And well, there's that, yeah. <laughs> and it's, but it's amazing. Like, how does a serialized Terminator show that brings different Terminators from the future that is constantly moving Judgment Day and changing how Skynet gets started and what exactly all of that is? How is it less convoluted than a two hour movie? Like, it is. It's less convoluted than Gen Ices. It just is. <laughs> And I, I don't, I don't really know how that's possible. It's kind of amazing. Um, one thing I was concerned about when the show started was, uh, so with third or fourth episode, you get the guy who creates the Turk, and the Turk is supposed to be the uh, predecessor to the Terminator. It's supposed to be uh, after Miles Dyson, what gets the ball rolling for Skynet. Uh, and so Sarah Connor is trying to stop the Turk from um, turning into that, and so she she has to she has to kill it, uh, and thinks that she it, and it's just a chess playing computer, and it's supposed to be the precursor to Skynet, and she's worried even that she might have to kill the guy who makes the Turk. Spoiler alert: that will happen later, but Reese will be the one who does it, and the uh, when she sets his house on fire and pretends like she's not the one who does it. And we get to the end of that episode. Uh, Austin, I'm thinking, oh, okay, I see what the show's going to be. Because remember, when this started, I only watched the first four or five episodes. I never even finished that first season. And I'm going, okay, so we had a bit of a slow burn at the beginning. But what this is ultimately going to be is going to be Sarah Connor going around, finding anything and everything that might be the precursor to Skynet and killing it. So... It may not be a monster of the week like every week we fight a Terminator, but it is going to be every week or two we're going to go find something that might be Skynet and kill it. Yeah. And I was pleasantly surprised that it isn't that, and the Turk is actually the main threat all the way through. Um, like, that, that is the thing that, that, that we think is supposed to be the precursor to Skynet. And then we're going to discover that it actually is a thing that is made by another Terminator to stop... The, the, the Terminators to win to win the war in the first place. The villain of season two is not the villain of season two unless it turns out that she is because the show never finished. I mean, that's just a perfect uh, explanation. <laughs> We're all over the place. I don't know how to not the, jump around trying to talk about this. Unless she is. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was amazed with, uh, in season one, we get, uh, you know, like our main villain who's kind of like the evil Terminator that's chasing them. And, uh, like, we don't really deal with him until midway through season two. I assumed they would kill him at the end of uh, season one. I do have to say, that, that guy takes forever to find anyone. Because he just is walking. He's like Cygor in Spawn. He's just walking forever. Like, it has a really good sense of place and time. Like, it makes sense, but I'm like, this guy's not in... Like, I'm not saying he's not in a hurry, but he takes a really long time to find anybody. Um, have you ever seen an actor with more range than that guy? No, that guy's amazing. <laughs> I don't know who that is. I've never seen him in anything else. He's amazing. He has, he has to play, like, he has to play the regular him, a Terminator version of him... And then, like, a learning computer type uh, character version of himself. And it's amazing. Yeah, initially he's a, he, he's a T-888. He is Chromerite? Is that, yeah, yeah. Chro uh, Cromarty. Cromarty, that's it's what it the is. The first Chrom time they said it, I thought they said Havarty. And I was like, is he named after G? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't remember his name. It, yeah, yeah, it's Cromartie. And then later on, uh, he's going to be the vessel for John Henry, which is the evolved version of the Turk. Yeah, and he's also an actor at the beginning too. That the Terminator takes his likeness that. of. Yeah, because that was one of the greatest things at the start. Is uh, he's just an exoskeleton, and he's got like this big suit on, and he looks like Bane, and he just like <laughs> walks around with that. <laughs> 
There's some really there's some really cool provocative images like that, and I kind of forget about the more over the top elements of this show because it's it general generally I would describe it as oddly understated. Like this is a really somber show. Um, it's it's not about the big bombastic action sequences like Terminator tends to be. It takes the philosophical and like like introverted side of Terminator 2 and really runs with that. But it also doesn't forget it's a Terminator thing. So it will do those big bombastic things. I just kind of forget about them because it's not the crux yeah. <laughs> of the show. And the main reason it doesn't do that all the time is because it doesn't have the money to. Uh, and it it knows how to be the kind of minimalistic show it has to be and still feel like it's got production values. Um, I think the first two or three episodes are a little bit rough around the edges. I uh, And, like, it, it needs to be a gritty-looking show, but, like, I think a, a lot of the action and pyrotechnics and stuff looks look a lot better after that. Uh, yeah. I don't know how much more money it got in the second season, but I, I think it's a much better-looking show later. Yeah, well, in uh, the last episode of season one, I think, has a really great way of getting around uh, production or uh, money where we're going to have, like, this big uh, fight scene between, like, SWAT people and uh, Cromartie, and instead of, you know, filming this elaborate action scene, we basically just film a, like, the inside of a pool, and you just see all the SWAT members fall into it dead. And then we cut after the fight. And it's really effective. Like, yeah, that's probably yeah. mostly oh, done cause they, they, that way because they don't have, you know, the $20 million to throw at that scene, but it's really effective. It works really well, yeah. Um, the stuff that, that, uh, that sticks with me most is the, um, is, is the smaller kind of more, more intimate stuff. Um, the, I, I gotta, I don't have a better place to put this. Um, I gotta mention the image from the first season, uh, that blew my mind and still sticks with me. Um, because we haven't talked about, we're half an hour in, we haven't talked about Summer Glass character at all. Uh, the the the, uh, the female Terminator, um, Cameron, and I love that her name is Cameron. Cameron. That's yeah. so that's so good. That's that's cool. Uh, like the the people making this again, they they love this franchise and they're handling it with kid gloves. And I, not that they're not confident, but they just want it to be good. They want it to be good so much. And I, uh, there's this great shot where they go to a. Uh, like robotics convention and there is oh i know uh, the shot you're talking about it blew my mind i uh, so there this is like episode i don't know three or four or four or five um there's this I think, isn't this when we start to get into the turk stuff it is yeah yeah it's like right in the middle of that season somewhere and i uh, we we start to yes, film because it's when the turk is at the chess battle yeah uh, we, yeah, so we've already established that guy, and then he's in the, and then he's in this next episode, right? Um, yeah. And we haven't talked too much about that whole thing either. But like later on, we'll find out that he he was supposed to in the future survive and be part of the resistance. But in this timeline, he's going to get killed, and so that means that Reese, by, by Reese, and so that means that Reese is from a different timeline where he survived, but now he's killed him, and so you have, again, that paradox thing. But anyway, so, um, <laughs> that guy is also a, an actor with a whole lot of range. Um, so, we got this great shot in this robotics con convention where you you go down a line of, like, the evolution of AI. And uh, I forget what exact what exactly all the pieces of it were, but we're just seeing, like, uh, like, like just a computer and then, like, getting getting slowly into... You know, it's sort of like monkey turning into man, right? It's like, it's like the, the whole evolution of man thing. And you get, like, three or four of these machines, and then Summer Glau stand right next to the last one. Like... That is killer. That is so oh, good. That's awesome, yeah. There's a lot of just little things like that where they make little, like, visual jokes and stuff like that that I think are really great. And it's really good at homaging uh, the really iconic stuff without uh, getting too blatant or cutesy about it. First episode of season two, you get uh, Summer Glau in a cop outfit like the T-1000. Uh, I thought that was a really cool nod. I liked that I a lot. I think I picked up on that. <laughs> hey, she's got the sunglasses? Like, it's clearly yeah. the T-1000? Yeah, the sunglasses, yeah. That was a really cool image. Uh, like, parts where like she goes nuts and is after him is uh she's in like the hardware store she's got like the staple gun and she's like <laughs> staple her face back together 
It's it's great, yeah. And this the show has a really odd sense of humor too, right? Because like there's plenty of levity, but again, it's really subtle. And again, it's a somber show. I mean, it's not like a laugh out loud kind of thing, but it also oddly doesn't take itself too seriously. Yeah, well, and like the I don't know how it strikes that balance. The humor comes from the Terminators themselves. Yeah, and f- specifically with Cameron from not just just like with uh, the the uh, the T eight hundred from Terminator two, uh, not understanding how people fit together, but trying to emulate them and mi- mimic them, uh, and that's played for comedy and tragedy constantly. Yeah. It is the two faces of comedy and tragedy equally. Uh, it's 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 fantastic. Um, Summer Glau's character uh, Cameron has a uh, catchphrase in the show, and it's not a it's not a cu- cutesy, goofy catchphrase. Uh, she is constantly saying "Thank you for explaining," and uh, and I, I love that. It's a great line. Um, it is sometimes used starca- sarcastically, and sometimes she is sincere because she doesn't understand how people fit together, but she does eventually seem to sort of kind of have the Star Trek data thing, where she wants to be more human. And there are lots of complex reasons for that, because there is sort of a human being built into her chemical makeup in the first place, because she's based on a girl that she seems to have the memories of, that in one episode she gets amnesia and then thinks she is that girl, and suddenly some more Glau's giving this completely other performance, and I mean, I knew she had rain but oh my god it was that a performance yeah. it's nuts and so i think that has to do with part of the reason that she's kind of uh, you know wishing that she could be more human and in, in, in going toward that but also we know that the terminators sometimes can have that within them because we see that transformation happen to the t-800 in terminator 2 as well and you kind of expect that to happen with her but it's more subtle it takes a lot longer to happen yeah when we get like not exactly callbacks, but kind of similar stuff. Like uh, in season one, we kind of do a uh, why do you cry scene where um, like John sees a girl who kills herself in season one. Yeah. And um, we get like a scene where all these people are laying down notes and she doesn't understand why people write notes to somebody who's dead that can't read it. Yeah. And we get, like I said, it's not the exact same scene, but it's it feels like it's building off that idea from T2. Yeah, it's a really good point. Um, and I don't know, like, the show just kept, uh, like, like, it's really thought-provoking, and it kept making me feel stuff, and, like, it's just, it's, it's, it's not, it's not just, you know, look, robots are cool. You know, like, scary, like, scary robots (laughs) killing people are cool. (laughs) Yeah! But what's also neat is they also love that iconography, and they give it to us every chance we, they, they get. And they, they, they find really believable like like organic ways to give that to us there's a lot of terminators without faces in this show they do it quite a bit and it works out pretty well not as much later we get a lot of it toward in the first half of season two there's not as much of it later uh but we do get get some of it again like little like termo freaks that show up in different episodes (laughs) that's awesome i meant we can count count them them. we can count termo halfway through counting them and then i forgot about it during season two and then i was like halfway through season two and i was like damn it i wish i'd been counting the termo freaks like why did i why did i forget about that that's awesome (laughs) I do really appreciate that in the last episode, since the show's going to get canceled, we finally get the iconic Cameron with half of her face off and, 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 the, and, and the, the red light eye, and it looks really good. Yeah, the effects in season two, I thought, in general, were really great. Um, like we, like everything with the T one thousand, except like one little bit at the uh, in the last episode, I thought looked really amazing. I know what you're talking. There's there's one there's one that's a little <laughs> silly. Uh, well, maybe a couple because I'm not sure that the eel coming back into her looks great. Yeah, that that's not great either. <laughs> I kind of slumped <laughs> that into the into the same scene. <laughs> that was a fun idea though. That she's got a piece of her that's in a fish tank the whole season. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that was pretty cool. And that's one of those things where it's like, there's no way you'd ever call that. <laughs> no. It's like, why? Well, everything what? about her is just really odd and off-putting. Yeah. And I don't think I would have ever guessed. Like, they could have had her in the show longer before we knew she was, she was the T-1001. I'm glad that we didn't do that because... 
uh, it's partly just because it's such a it's such a provocative moment. And you're not really expecting it. Um, although uh, that's part of what makes that season feel a lot longer to me. Is it's like, look, she's killing. It. She's she's a, she's a, you know TNT one thousand one, and then several episodes later, she's finally murdering people as that. And in the interim, you're just like, okay, I know what she is. Like I'm kind of waiting for things to get rolling. Did you feel yeah. like? we're at a you know a little bit of a holding pattern with her a little bit too long through that season um all the stuff with her and uh ellison it just it all matters there was a point and where i don't I feel like laugh because every time you see them they're always just meeting in her office <laughs> yeah. like, it feels like we're always just cutting back to the same scene <laughs> and the thing is if you go back and string it all together i do think it's all leading somewhere i don't think oh it's, definitely i don't think it's those scenes it, it, i i was explaining this to my wife because she she hasn't seen the show and she was like and, and, I, and i was i was telling her that that was kind of my one big complaint is that i felt like i was in too much of a holding pattern with her and she was like well is it like those scenes in picard with the uh with the romulan guy and his sister i'm like no because this makes sense and it's not the same scene over and over again it feels like you it feels like an extension of the same scene but it doesn't feel like we keep having the same conversation over and over again uh yeah. like in that it's it's different but it's not always like moving story along so much of it is so much as it's it's moving like theme along right like a lot of the kind of uh the the, the uh like like uh discussion about religion and stuff happens in those scenes uh the you know god created man versus man played god created robots uh there's there's a there's a whole lot of biblical allegory um yeah that, there is a lot of it in this show and and i, I think it, there's quite a few it, episodes that are really named well. after like biblical stories too mm -hmm. and uh well my favorite thing with the T1000 is the daughter yeah that she's like raising <laughs> raising a kid and just that whole scene where they're uh or episode where they're in the therapy it's the therapist's office yeah it's great she is uh she she immediately recognizes that her mother is not her mother uh which is maybe a stereotypical kid thing where it's like the kids pick up on everything the adults don't but I think it works with this because it's like you're not acting anything like my mom, and she's also led to believe finally that it really is her mother. Where, where like maybe uh, she was just acting kind of strange because I, uh, you know, things weren't going well, and I uh, once she starts like spending more time with her daughter and she smiles in the creepiest smile possible That's at her. That's in where she's like studying videos of what like the person she's playing is supposed to be like, and then the daughter comes in and is watching it, and she's. <laughs> It's like rubbing the daughter's arm is so uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, I really, I really felt for that kid all the way through. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that whole thing was great, and the scene where she's like talking to John in the therapist's office and the T one thousand because you think she's evil at that point, like walks by without looking in. It's like <laughs> it got me. <laughs> it was uh, like really suspenseful. But yeah, um, I, I mentioned that she's supposed to be uh, T one thousand one. That I don't think is ever mentioned in the show. But it's, uh, but but it, it, if you go if you go research it, um, yeah, that, I did that's read what they that, put it I in the. I wasn't sure if I missed it somewhere, but I don't think they ever say it. I don't think they do either. Uh, but she's apparently supposed to be, according to like background material, she's apparently supposed to be a uh, slightly better model of the T one thousand, which I guess is why it's just. Thousand one, I uh, which is I guess how they get away with having her recover a lot faster. Yeah, well I thought that too because I assumed it was just like a TV thing of well, we don't want to hold on these effects for too long. <laughs> I think that's exactly what it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's just an upgraded one. At what? least it's not the TX, I guess. <laughs> the TX. Yeah, I I all so. Going back to the daughter for a minute, um, what's really interesting about her, of course, is uh, the 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 like childhood innocence of the Turk of the robot. We're, we're, we we uh, or the thing that's supposed to be be the precursor for Stargate, but then turns out not to be that. Um, is is a uh, constantly um, like mirrored with her um, or or uh, or paralleled to her. Uh, they have a they have a friendship. 
And we're supposed to see uh, John Henry, uh, the the evolved Turk, uh, again played by that freaking crazy amazing actor, uh, <laughs> as as uh, as this um, like like childlike character who is f- f- like sorry, I just had this thought where I was where, where I was like. I think a lot of people who don't like Age of Ultron would like that movie even less watching this show. Because, like, Ultron figures out who he is and what he wants, like, so quickly. And this thing, simultaneously, while it has all of this knowledge, acts like a child. Um, Yeah. I didn't think of that connection, but that is true. I just thought of that. But anyway, all of... All of that is really interesting. I don't have any other point to make except I I, well, I, I liked wondering... that I liked that take on it a lot. Where we're like because yeah, it was very a lot I should mention a lot of this show is about unvilifying the Terminators. Um, not that none of them are scary, but saying that it's more complicated than that. Uh, it does the same thing that the Animatrix does with the uh, machines in that, and says that uh, they're not all bad, and they don't necessarily all even start from a bad place. Um, there's like they they uh, there's different ones that end up wanting different things, and so it's not just the ones that we reprogram that might be on our side. I get the sense because we're never going to know because the show didn't get finished that Weaver was not reprogrammed is yeah. the sense I get I think yeah, she's of some I other faction reprogram a T-1000 <laughs> but that was one of the things I'm like I'm annoyed we'll uh, never get the answer to because we set up that they ask her to join them she says no and then you know in the present she is with them so yeah we're missing so much connective tissue. And I'm sure the storytellers know exactly where they're going with all that. Oh, of course, yeah. That, yeah, it's one of those things where I never doubt that they know where they're going. It's just we never got there. <laughs> and that's why uh, I never got I never got sick of watching it or didn't didn't trust that it would, you know, keep my attention and stay interesting because again, I do think that second season is slower than it needs to be. But because it won me over so, you know, so fast at the beginning, uh, and everything keeps, you know, connecting and seeming to make sense, uh, even as slow as it gets, I'm not like, okay, well, you guys are just spinning your wheels. It just feels like it's just Bendis level decompression. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, there's certain reveals. Like in season one, you find out that uh, Cameron, because she's supposed to melt down all the evil Terminators they fight. And we get a reveal that she isn't, and they never pay that off until, like, halfway through season two. Yeah. Where, like, that's when John finds out, and then Sarah finds out. Yeah, and there's stuff that they wait on for a long time, and I stopped going, okay, are we ever going to get to that? Like, at one point, I was like, well, okay, actually, with some things, I did think that, but not because I didn't think that they had forgotten it, that they dropped threads. It was because I didn't know if it would have been in a third season that we never got. Uh, The cancer thing is really interesting that it takes as That's long as it does. That's a big part of where I think we're going. <laughs> What's that? That's a big part of where I thought they were going. Uh, yeah, it's wild story. that we don't even reveal what might be causing that until the very end of the second season. Um, yeah. So we haven't even talked about the whole time travel thing at the beginning of the show. Um, I'm sure this review is hard to follow if you've not watched this, but w- it's we just convoluted as Genesis. This review, this review, yeah. Well, we we just uh, we just finished watching it. My head is spinning with all these different things. Um, we had, well, it's hard I think to be organized. So many episodes, and there's just so many different ideas that come up throughout the show. It, it is hard to just nail down everything and talk about it in like a streamlined way yeah and 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 if and if we had gone more linear uh yeah yeah exactly we're just like terminator like we're sort of linear but then we we um, <laughs> go back in time yeah, yeah ex- exactly like, well, let's just jump forward and the whole thing is go back yeah the whole thing the whole thing is a paradox you know and there's gonna be there are a lot of different you know possible endings to them but there's there, there there's no ending but the one that we make uh and then this Austin. video will just cut to black and we'll never get the end <laughs> It's all, it's all you get. And then people will be like, I don't know, I think some of that they could have got done faster. Um, I think it needed to be quite that long. So let's talk, now that we're 49 minutes into this review, about the uh, an, an initial status quo that's established in, in the show. Um, the end of the first episode, they go into a bank, 
and they find a time machine in a bank. And this is how they're going to contrive a way for the show to take place in what was then the present day. And initially, I'm thinking, ah, oh, do you have to do that? Like, why couldn't you have just kept the show set a few years ago? Is it really, like, it's not like a hard period piece to make, you know? You're not having to go back to, like, Salem, Massachusetts in the 1800s. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't know, uh, I don't know why you have to do that. And then they really won me over on it really quickly. Uh, because, you know, I got the sense that they were probably worried that a lot of people wouldn't watch the show uh, if it didn't feel, you know, relevant and set now. And I don't know if I agree with that, but if they had to do that, that seemed like maybe it was like a Fox mandate or something. And if they had to do that, it is done in the most creative way possible. Because the whole reason that they have to time travel and jump, uh, what, what, eight years ahead? Is yeah, they go it, to two thousand nine. I think they they go they go to uh, they go to 07. I mean, they go to the year. Oh, did they it, go to 07? They go okay, to the year I, that it was. I must be thinking of season two when then, the show started. So like, yeah, because yeah. enough time passes that I think we do finally get. I think we do catch up, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not positive. I forget what year we are at the end. But anyway, um, they jump a few years ahead because they have to skip over Sarah Connor dying of cancer. Because John still needs her and can't operate without her. So uh, there is a is is it like another good Terminator that sets that up? Was it was it Cameron that I can't remember who sets that up in the bang. I think it's just somebody went back in time and set that up for like whenever they'd need it. But I could be wrong. Yeah, it was just it was just sitting. That's what it was. It was just sitting there. It was just kind of sitting there. Yeah, and somebody needed it. And so uh, they they jump ahead. And they skip over her her uh, dying of cancer. And every now and again, we'll talk about whether or not that might still happen. Like, so, like, Sarah's still worried about it. But there are a lot of episodes before it finally comes up again. And I that was a thing where I was like, have we, have we forgotten about the cancer thing? And every time I'm thinking of that, it comes back up. And at the end of the show, we finally suggest that it may have something to do with her proximity to Terminators. And uh, it's it's never really established if that is what is causing it. And even at the end, whether she has it, like I think we're supposed to to to, to think by the end that she definitely has it because why else has she lost so much body mass? Yeah, yeah, I, I think she has it by the end. And because I think with the show, what they were doing is you start off more with Sarah as the main character. And then, because in T3, she, like, died off screen from cancer. So I feel like their idea oh, was to take that. that story of John dealing with her death yeah. and actually telling it. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a novel concept, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like that's kind of where we were probably going with the show, is eventually we would get to more of a place where John was the main character and we would kind of phase her out. Which but is weird knows. because her name's in the title. Like, she is the protagonist of the show. Like, it's... And again, they both are. probably die in the finale, but... <laughs> yeah. Well, what's weird about it is we know that uh, they had, like, a four-year plan for this. I... Uh, and so... Because they say Judgment Day is 2011, and they went back to 2007. And so, so they would have caught up to what yeah. that Judgment Day would have been. Um, unless, the, unless the finale of that show is, we saved it off one more time. <laughs> Maybe it won't happen. I don't know. There's no fate in what you may. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, who, who knows how that is. I'm, I think she probably dies at the end of that show, though. Yeah, yeah, I think because so. Because her whole existence is to make sure that he survives. And what I love is it's not just because he's the savior of mankind. It's because he's her son and she loves him. Like, that is has as much to do with it. And it's all about what a mother would do for her son, of course. And she goes through, she goes to, like, crazy lengths to keep him alive. And there's a lot of ends justifies the means questions in this show. Um, I love her finally having to deal with, with a point blank cold murdering someone where like she, she had never really done that before. And then finally is kind of, is kind of forced to do that and face that. Um, she's just always left really, um, sympathetic. Uh, uh, do you mean at the beginning of uh, season two? Yeah. By, uh, it's actually John that kills, uh, the person. I thought she no no I no like, no in the in the in the in the plant. 
Uh, there's a there's a part later where oh, she has sorry. to. Oh, sorry, I'm I'm mixing up scenes. It's really easy to do at that. The there's... Beginning of season two, there's like the scene where they kill the guy, and they make you think it's Sarah for the longest time before right. they reveal it's John. I forgot about that one. Yeah, we just forgot well, about different ones. Of that yeah. Scene, yeah. Um, but no, and, and am I right about that? Wasn't the whole idea that because I uh, she she has to no, I know what it is. She thinks she killed that guy, but he's not dead. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, because they deal with, like, they're hanging out with, like, the family in the next episode. And then it turns, yeah, and we think that uh, this 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 guy is dead, and then uh, his his family has been pretending like he's dead, but he's not. Now, on a, again, we're jumping all over the place. The, the, uh, the, the daughter who, like, doesn't look at the picture at the funeral, I wasn't sure I completely bought that in the moment where John's like, Oh yeah, she's not. He he can't be dead because she never looked at that picture. And I'm like, I mean, I guess I see the logic of that, but like, do yeah, I buy that he would have jumped to that? Like, I don't know. That's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> yeah, and, and just, then he's so completely so right about it. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> he knows a thing or two about mourning. Yeah, because John's like, well, if you had a picture of Kyle, wouldn't you look at it? And he was like, ah, you got me there. <laughs> yeah, like. I guess you would. I needed it to be a series of things, right? <laughs> like she's been, she's been doing some other things that are a little off, and like I guess she kind of has been, but I don't know that he was suspicious of her until then. So that yeah. was kind of a question I had. Uh, man, this is just a roller coaster. This show, and inside of specific episodes too, like the the, the episode where we're not sure what is the dream and what is real was friggin' mind-boggling. Uh, <laughs> Sarah is in is is kidnapped and in a truck, but she's also in a uh, psych ward. And we're not sure which thing is actually happening. And it's framed where every time she goes to sleep in psych ward, she wakes up in this truck kidnapped by the guy who we thought was dead. And then it turns out that that's the real thing. And I wasn't 100% sure what to make of all that by the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that episode is pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not sometimes get kind of an X-Files vibe from this show? I've never seen X-Files. So okay, well, I'm I got no. very often an X-Files vibe from this show. I've seen the Simpsons X Files episode, but that well, did not watch, remind me of that. You should watch the X Files. I think you'd enjoy it. Yeah, well, it used to be on Netflix. Well, I wanted to gets watch it, but really it's really frustrating. Now. But it's the the, the uh, especially the uh, a lot of the standalones are really great. Um, but yeah, this had that quality sometimes where it was like at the end of the day, you're not supposed to really know what the answers are. Uh, with 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 some of the like smaller, just weird stuff. Um, the what puts it above X Files, especially if it had probably you know, especially probably if it had gotten an ending, is that all of the mythology stuff is actually tracking and seems to go somewhere, and they seem to know what they're doing with that, which was not the case with the X Files. Um, with this, it was the standalones that was that were weirder, and that I didn't always know what was going on. Um, but you know, I really like I said. It's too much of a slow burn in that second season. But on the other hand, uh, I enjoyed a lot of the kind of one-offs, and they were all still always pushing forward the larger narrative. Uh, there was a really cool variety of different kinds of fun standalone, um, somewhat standalone episodes in this. You get the Terminator that goes all the way back to, back what to was the it, the 1920s? Was it the 20s? Yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. That was a cool yeah, idea. That, that was really cool. I was like, I've never seen, you know, the like Terminator go back to something like that. It was just like an interesting change of pace. You get like a Terminator with like a Tommy gun. And I also really like, again, you could have done that so convoluted, where it's like, there's a Terminator that thinks that he can use, you know, sort of like uh, in, in the Borg and First Contact. Let's, like, let's go all the way back to First Contact and assimilate the Federation during a period where there's not all that many people on the planet. I, at first, I thought that's well, now what... Now I want Caveman Terminator. <laughs> there's a bunch of... <laughs> like caveman Connor. <laughs> At first, I, I thought that's what this was gonna be, where it was like he went all the way back to stop to to like make something happen that would make that, that would make sure like decades and decades later that Skynet happened. Uh, but no, he just 
got thrown off course when he went back in time when he wound up in the in, 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 way farther in the past than he was supposed to. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite things with that guy is, like, she goes to the building where he's supposed to kill the person, and he's just hiding in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love in this show, uh, we get, like, um, there's also the episode with the Terminator and, like, the vault. We get just Terminators who, you know, have nothing really to do, so they just kind of turn <laughs> off and just stand there. Like, <laughs> And then, like, that's what Dark Fate should have been after Arnold killed uh, John Connor. He should have just stood there. Yeah, instead of going and having a family where he has a wife that he doesn't sleep with. (laughs) In a drapery. (laughs) Um, I, like I said, I really enjoyed those one-offs. I thought the uh, alien UFO angle was cool. That yeah. was also another thing that r- reminded me a lot of X-Files, of course. Uh, not just because it's that premise, but like the way it's handled. Where it's like, there is some truth to some of this, but nobody believes it. Uh, and that, um, that like, man-slash-lady that, 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 uh, that Sarah has to work with through that episode, it was a fascinating character. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um... Uh, I'm trying to remember like exactly that episode because some of season two admittedly has like blurred together because I watched so much of it. Like, oh all. sure, yeah. Well, she goes to that UFO know. convention because she's trying to figure out the three lights thing. Oh yes, that, oh that's the start of the three light story, isn't it? Yeah, and I uh, she the three dots or whatever. Yeah, yeah, and she finds some. I can't remember if she worked for the plant or what it was. Um, the, the, the woman who's, uh, like, like, hiding out by, uh, or I think, like, she was a man, she's hiding out by pretending to be a woman, but, like, she actually always wanted, to, like, 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 preferred to be a woman, so they do kind of a trans thing with it, um, which was, like, 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 uh, like, really well handled, um, I, I don't know, like, like, whenever, that, that show's not afraid to tackle anything, also, is a thing that I, that I really appreciate, too. and I, like, it never felt pandering and heavy-handed or anything, it was just like, here's a character that's doing a thing, and I don't care what you think about it, and I don't know, it's just, it's a really bold show. Yeah, one of my favorite things in terms of just that is there's, like, the one episode in season one where, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what it is, it's like, Cameron's like looking for this guy and his sister, I think, and um, like they're being hunted by people, and she ends up leading the like people to them, and uh, it's like Cameron's in like this hotel where they are, and she's just walking out as the people come in to kill them, and it's like doesn't stop to do anything, <laughs> and I don't that just like <laughs> really stuck with me. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe. Because, like, Cameron's walking down the stairs, and you can see them breaking down, like, this family's door, and you can just hear gunshots. And it was like, wow, like, I can't believe we went that far. I'm... Yeah, it's it's nuts. Uh, I really appreciate how it, it, this is, you know, obviously a show, like Terminator always was, uh, about a really, really strong female protagonist, and... It, it just it just does it. it doesn't have to talk about any of that stuff like it's just it's just there this is this is who this character is it's yeah. great yeah no definitely and uh like you talked about there's the episode where like summer glow kind of has amnesia and she's hanging out with like the uh, like the girl that like lives on the street yeah and like living out in the uh or they go to like was it the shelter i think and we get like the whole episode with that. And um, uh, <laughs> you were talking about earlier, you know, with Cromartie where he sucks at tracking them. <laughs> um, one of my favorite moments is where he finds that girl and it's just him and her kind of driving around. And he just has a picture of Cameron and they just go to all these different places asking if people have seen her. And then he literally just starts going door to door in L.A. And she's like. Dude, like, do you know how many people live in this city? And then she eventually just annoys him to the point where he punches her out of the car. <laughs> I totally, yeah, yeah, I forgot all about that. Oh my god, he's he is he is a terrible Terminator. Um, yeah, it's great. I think when he goes to meet with Ellison in that one episode, and he's just like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna kill you because eventually you'll lead them, you'll lead me to uh, the Connors." So it's like you're so lazy. Follow you around. <laughs> 
Yeah, and then does that actually happen? Um, I don't remember. No. It, it, like, like, because I mean, at the end of the day, they end up just killing him and putting him in a hole, and then uh, his his body is picked up like right after that, so that he can become John Henry. But I well, couldn't remember how we got to that place. Down. Yeah, they're in Mexico. Yeah. Because uh, John has, like, a girlfriend that we haven't talked about at all. At all, which we probably need to <laughs> talk about. <laughs> and, I knew this uh, would be a long one. There's a, there's a lot here. Oh, there's, there's so many different plot threads. It's, it's, it's funny, too, because I dense. keep saying that second season is too slow and that it didn't need to be 22 episodes, and yet there's all of this stuff that we still haven't even gotten to. Yeah, oh, I know, it's crazy. You know, there's how yeah. you feel watching a thing, and then there's talking about it later. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. But yeah, it's like they uh, eventually fight him in Mexico, which is we get more of like an action scene than what we did with uh, at the end of season one with the pool shot. Yeah, and it, like it all looks pretty good. I thought um, where he kind of shoots up a police station in Mexico, which reminded me a bit of the first Terminator. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like it's a bit smaller, but it reminded me a bit of that. I'm just trying to think of. Uh, Maybe it is Allison that leads. I can't. I can't remember. I think my favorite episode of that second season, except for that opener, just because it's so thrilling. Like I honestly, I think that's the most suspenseful I, stuff. In I that. think that's my favorite episode of the show. It's so good. Um, second to that, though, if I have to pick like a really good character episode, I really like the one where. I I don't I don't have episodes pulled up right here, so I'm I'm gonna do the, the friends thing. I like the one where they uh, where, where uh, Sarah Connor has to uh, protect the little boy who has the oh, name yeah. I was gonna mention of a that guy with the mother thing. who the Terminator is oh. after, uh, who ends up not actually being the kid that he's after. Um, where they're they're kind of uh, cribbing on the, that uh, whole idea from the first movie, where the Terminator just goes down the list in the phone book and goes after all of those people and we actually make one of those a character and uh, that kid gets kidnapped for his own protection and kind of sort of understands what's going on but all he wants to do is get his homework done <laughs> that that is such a great episode yeah no that that is a really good episode um, yeah because you have Sarah with the kid and then you have John and Kyle who are with the actual target who's like a runner for the uh, resistance yeah oh yeah that's right yeah. Is that the episode where at the end they go and see uh like like uh the the two Reese's as kids playing baseball in the front yard? No, that's that... the end of, that's uh the first season's finale. Oh that's that's right, that's right. I sorry, this is that that yeah. scene suddenly came to me. Yeah, no no. Um yeah, because that's when it's John's birthday and that's like Derek's uh birthday present. Because then at the end of the episode, they send Cameron out for cake, and that's where you find out there's a car bomb uh, on the oh, car, and right. she explodes, and that's the big uh, cliffhanger. I uh, yeah, I I ended up having to take a little bit of a break between one and two, so some of one's still a little bit fuzzy for me right now. But anyway, well, I had a break between uh, episode one of two and the rest of two. <laughs> I was well, that's okay, because that that's basically the that's basically the end of season one. Because <laughs> I was watching that episode, and I'm like, I don't know, I don't know if you have this, but whenever I watch like a season finale, I'm always waiting for that moment where it's like this is more like the big crazy thing happens, and then that episode's so understated, and I was like, oh, I guess like nothing really is gonna happen in this. And then she just explodes. <laughs> and I was like, well, I can't go to bed now. It's like four in the morning, but I have to watch the next episode. <laughs> I also really, in speaking of that, because this is, it's related, of course, to, to all of that. Um, I also really like that episode where they have to take the chip out of her head and then go find it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that that is pretty good, too. Um... It's it's fun when the MacGuffin of an episode is one of your character's brains. 
And not in like a Spock's brain kind of way, you know, like it's not silly. Like it's so let's talk about her for a second, uh, you know, more than we have been, uh, because when we started watching the show, you, you mentioned to me that you really liked the idea of uh, going from the, the father figure Terminator to the love interest Terminator. Um, we never get to, of course, to fully f- like, like, like flesh out and finish out the whole love interest angle because the show ended. Um, but at least as far as we got with that, um, did it take that as far as you wanted it to? Well, it's How'd funny you feel because about it? I picked up on that in the first episode, and then through the like the rest of season one, I was like, ah, I don't really see it as much. So maybe, maybe I'm wrong. And then we pull it up more in season two, and like everywhere I've seen Summer Glow or like people who worked on the show talk about it, they bring up that idea. Like with John's girlfriend, Summer Glow has talked about how. Uh, the whole idea was to show like a Terminator feeling jealousy with that, but it's all like super understated in the actual show. It is definitely a love triangle and it's really easy yeah. to miss at all that it's a love triangle, which is killer. Cause you know yeah. how much I usually hate those <laughs> and it really works. Now it does come from a pretty elaborate, almost goofy plot. And we should talk about that because I think it's probably the, the the weakest subplot. I'm not a big fan of the whole Jesse thing. Oh yeah, no, I, I can see that because she comes in uh, allegedly. So she comes from the future. She is the love interest of Uncle Reese. And again, if I'm if I'm reading this right, the idea is that they're actually from two different futures and don't realize it for a long time, which yeah. is such a cool idea. And. <laughs> What what I and and basically the because we do an identity thing with it where the idea is if events played out differently, uh, the the Jesse that Reese knows is a is, is not the Jesse that she is and she is more moral ambiguous and has lost something about herself that I uh, that that he was in love with and he, she she is you know less less altruistic and is kind of broken in a way that his version wasn't and by the way when you get to the whole to the two parter with the submarine. Uh, in the future, you see the the way that she changes. So, like, at at one time, she was, like, a more likable character who I might have actually enjoyed <laughs> being in a TV show. And she, uh, and, and, and you see her come to become really suspicious and distrustful of even the, the, uh, the Terminators that work with them. And uh, gets really paranoid and gets kind of broken and, and, and loses something. And so... The idea is uh, that that uh, Reese's Jesse probably wouldn't have done that, and this one has gone through some stuff that he didn't get to see. And so when she comes back, her whole plan is allegedly to just uh, keep John, um, you know, you know, make sure that John becomes the person that he's that, that he's supposed to, and uh, does that by. Um, giving him uh, this girlfriend who somehow is supposed to help do that. But the real reason that uh, she's there is to set up Cameron uh, looking like she murdered his girlfriend so that John would hate the machine and murder the machine and be more likely then to become the John Connor he's supposed to. It's a little convoluted. And so, like, yeah. she came back and brought the that girl with her to make sure that the girl died so that she could frame a robot. Yeah, well, the best part of that entire subplot is the ending where she finally asks John if it would have worked, and he's just like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. Did you find that as convoluted as I did? Yeah, well, I, I kind of felt that was the most, like, wheel-spinning thing I thought was just everything with Jesse. Yeah. Uh, like, a bit, at least, anyways. It, it is the most typical TV thing in the show. It's the most CW-esque thing in the show. <laughs> it's not as bad as that kind of stuff sometimes is. I Like, it still never reaches some of the heights of, of like, no, and convoluted there's stuff I like nonsense. That. Like, I like the yeah. sub- the uh, submarine thing. Um, I do too, but it, it sucks that I don't like that character until I get her backstory. Like, I have yeah, to see that uh, flashback sure. before... And it's not just that I need to understand who she was before I find her sympathetic. That's part of it. But, like, I didn't like that actress until that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I kind of had that too. 
I, I wasn't sure she was a good actress until we got to those scenes, and then I was like, oh, no, she's pretty good. She can act. Okay. They yeah, didn't no, win I me over. I thought that, too, where she kind of felt like the uh, like the weakest link for a while. Well, and then she dies right after that, so that makes sense because she is the weakest link. One of your link. main Goodbye. actors is from Beverly Hills 902. That's, <laughs> 902. <laughs> that's like a bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> I did not realize that. That's a good point. But, uh, yeah, but yeah so how, how did you feel about her uh, relationship with Reese and all of that? Um, yeah, I don't know. We get like a, just a lot of scenes with them where it <laughs> kind of feels like it's just kind of remember this person's here. I uh, like, I like aspects about it. It just kind of goes on a bit too long. I think that's one of those things where, and, and the John Henry thing was like this to a lesser degree. Cause ultimately all of that plot stuff was interesting. Once I knew what was going on and we got there at the end with the Jesse stuff, I wasn't as interested in all of that. Like, I guess the 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 idea of becoming so hardened in order to fight the machines that you lose your humanity and become more like a machine on paper is is good stuff. And there's always been some of that, I guess, in 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 the idea of Terminator. Like like Sarah in trying to protect her son, which is like the most basic primal, you know, motherly instinct, uh, has to sometimes be more like a machine than a than a person. Uh, it's like that's that's always been in there. Um, particularly in two. But Yeah, yeah, of course. The the so the idea that we're left with at the end of that of uh she is literally not the person that he was dating. Uh, I I like I like that, but I don't like her. So once we get to that moment, I'm like, okay, on paper, this is all really good. But, like, I'm not invested in these characters at this point. Yeah. Yeah, no, like I said, I, that felt like the most just kind of... It was just kind of there. <laughs> I did like the way they handled... Uh, everybody, or, 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 you know, some people assuming that uh, Cameron must have done it, and Cameron becoming kind of the, the victim in that situation, that was all really sad. Like, I liked that. Yeah, no, I like the scene where, um, or the scene, the episode where John's kind of, like, fighting with Sarah and Cam Cameron, where uh, Sarah thinks that she did it, and Cameron obviously denies it, but John can't trust her. I, and I don't know, some people might look at this and say it's too melodramatic. Uh, these actors sometimes sell things that I would otherwise call too melodramatic in a way where I'm really buying it. In that scene, uh, she is looking past her mother and says, I'm sorry I didn't believe you. I was just about and to And then Sarah's that. like, that's yeah. okay. And he's like, I'm not talking to you. And, and, the, and the camera moves and we get to... He, he 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 wasn't he wasn't acting as bratty as the way I just delivered the line. Um, the I was talking to you, mom. <laughs> mom. Yeah, he wasn't like Wesley Crusher. It wasn't that. So the 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 camera pans, uh, or we get a cut or something, and we and we see that Cameron has been standing there, and he's apologizing to her for not believing in her. Uh, and that whole thing was great. I also like the way this well, show. I mean, that scene was just missing. Sorry. They needed the. Uh... Dun, 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 when it showed <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> oh, there's a robot over there. That's the, that's the sound that it's like a game show. If you hear that sound, it means there's a robot over there. Um, and we haven't talked at all about music and stuff in this, but I uh, the, the but but the music in the show is really good uh, and is as subtle and somber and understated as everything else in the show. Um, it has the uh. It, it has bits of the traditional uh, Terminator theme, but most of what we get is just a da 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 da, -da. And then uh, every character kind of has their own theme. And uh, th there's the kind of like like a uh, tragic, like, like motherly theme for uh, Sarah Connor that's uh, in it the most and is the best theme in the show. And it's a really good soundtrack. Yeah, see, I, I, don't, I don't pick up on music as much, but <laughs> sure. Um, like the music that I did notice was really good. It, uh, I don't know, it just, it just puts you in in a mood. Uh, there's a there's a really distinctive tone to the show where, they, like, even apart from the movies, uh, I found myself you know uh, feeling a way while I watched this that I didn't feel like I necessarily feel watching anything else. If that makes any sense, like it's got a very distinctive uh, kind of kind of vibe. Um, Something else. I, oh, yeah. I, I, I want. I sorry. Um, I was going. I was going somewhere with with uh with machines. Oh, I know what it was. So um, something about machines. 
I, What's I, the deal with machines? <laughs> They're I, killing us. <laughs> another... Why don't you just press their off button? Another thing... That's that, the problem. The machines are set to evil. You gotta hit the switch to good. Another potentially typical TV thing that you... Oh, oh so it's just Metalhead from 87 Ninja Turtles. That's the doll from The Simpsons. Oh, yeah, that too. There's a... T- Sometimes typical TV thing that the show handles more or less really well, I think, uh, which is to create drama, we need uh, all of our characters at some point deceiving each other and lying to each other and keeping secrets. Uh, this sh- I really wish that Smallville could have taken notes from this show on how to make characters compelling and sympathetic or keeping secrets from each other. Because even though uh, Sarah and uh, John... Uh, care about each other and uh, more or less trust each other, they very often have to lie to each other for the sake of protecting each other. Uh, The show is really good about actions and consequences. They very often have to pay the piper for doing that. But there's also... I also always understand why they're doing that, and I feel like there's often at least a grain of truth in, well, you're kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't. Um, Like, there are places where John's like, yeah, I'm not going to tell my mom about this because she's not going to understand, but I have to do this thing. And uh, she's overprotective, but, like, has to be. uh, And she doesn't always tell him everything either for the sake of protecting him. And... Uh, I I bought that more than I thought I would because when I could, when I could tell that we were starting to go that way I was like well everything does this you know I have to do the don't keep secrets from me mom plot but like it in well, this particular I mean, case it made sense and, and Cameron has to do it too we have a robot that is constantly deceiving the the, the people that she's there to help yeah well yeah like even one of the I think it's the third last episode yeah. Is uh, Sarah Connor basically cutting off uh, Derek and Cameron, but not telling John until like they get there? The yeah, White House she says we're, we're going to the desert, and uh, then they don't go to the desert; they go to Charlie because, of course, we have to make sure that he dies before the third season starts. Yeah, I did think now. Now that we're there, I did think that this show had a little bit of that. Uh, we got to hurry up and ramp up and get the big stuff going in the last two episodes. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we kill off Derek in the second last episode, and they like they draw like no attention to it. It just kind of happens. It really does feel when like when it first happened, I was like, "What?" <laughs> I think part of that though is to shock us when he shows up in the future. I think so too. I think we probably get would him off screen, in future Derek, and put all of this like like all these other questions that we've had up front and start kind of answering things but not really with some of them and uh make us kind of forget about Derek in the shuffle and then you get to the very end and oh he's back cuz he's in a future where he hasn't died yet um yeah. i think that's why that's so unceremonious cuz it happens yeah that's what i was thinking too I think it happens before the intro of that episode. I think it's it's like four minutes in, he's dead already, if memory yeah. serves. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah, because it's the episode where the Terminators are going after uh, Savannah, the T-1000's daughter, and they yeah. like they get them, and they're all leave, like getting out of there, and Derek just dies. <laughs> he's just walking down the hallway, and he gets shot in the head. <laughs> so, like... like oh. Like, like, I, I'm, how easy go, I guess. I'm not saying it's quite like five minute wrap up or anything, and all roads were definitely leading to where we ended up. But I, I do feel like I can see the writing in it a little bit, where it, it gets a little rushy, where it's like, uh, you know, we've had this slow burn, we've been building suspense all this time, and like, like, you know, you want the dominoes to start falling, but some of those dominoes felt like, not like we just set them up, but I, I don't know. It, it's it's a it's a little. Some of that was I think just a little bit too easy. Yeah, well, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, we do kind of have to rush through like a bit in the last two episodes. So um, a lot of stuff to cover. I got yeah. 
I got a couple, and we have a lot of stuff to cover too. I have a couple <laughs> of uh, real big points I want to make sure to throw out before we finish. And uh, Austin, if you've got any other major things we haven't covered that I'm not thinking of, uh, or big things that uh, you, you really care about that I have forgotten, make sure to throw them in too. Um, one point, just out of any context at all, because I don't know where else I would put this, uh, that I wanted to mention, I should have said this toward the beginning, is uh, I like... This might seem like a really obvious point, but it impressed me early on, so I feel the need to bring it up. Um, I like the consistency of recasting in this show. Uh, we don't feel the need to use any footage at all from the movies, uh, and we recast everybody. Now, I don't know if the show would have had the rights to use any of that stuff or if they could have gotten anybody to come back. But I like that they don't, like, recast some people but try to bring other people back. All the way down to we cast a real actor as a still photo. I uh, Miles Dyson is played by one of my favorite actors, Phil Morris. And we see a picture of him twice. It bookends the show. We see him very early on, and then toward the end again, we get a picture of him. And uh, we could have used a picture of the actor who played him, or maybe we could have, who played him in uh, Terminator 2, but because everybody else is recast, uh, and this this show has uh, like its, its own flavor uh, that is, you know, uh, still consistent with those movies, but I think it has its own flavor, it, it, um, it consistently recasts everything. So even Miles Dyson... A dead person is played by a different actor. I really yeah. appreciated that. <laughs> we also get the um, uh, the therapist from Terminator One and Two just for one episode, and he's like super obsessed with God or something like that in that episode in uh, season oh, is one. Oh, that who that was supposed to be? With, yeah, oh, that's he, right. That was that was her and therapist, he's Senator Kelly. He's Senator Kelly. <laughs> he's he's great, and he's like super horrifying. And I think it was a misstep to kill him that fast. I think he should have stuck around for a while. Yeah, I know. When I realized that's who that character was, I assumed he was going to be around, but they get nope. rid of him quick. Doesn't he die in a fire? Doesn't that that house burn down and he dies in that? Yeah, something like that. I think. I think <laughs> it's Terminator. It likes explosions. It finds ways to make explosions happen. Yeah, it finds ways to make people dead. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also want to uh, break down the ending a little bit more and uh, do do a little bit of theorizing and stuff. So, because um, because we should have real quick the uh, like where do you think we would have gone conversation, uh, which we we've touched on a little bit, but. Um, yeah, I got there's, my big one out of the way. <laughs> there's more of that to be had, maybe. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Remind me, what was your what was your big one? It's um, like the Sarah uh, cancer thing that we were leading to basically a story where John has to deal with her death. Um, yeah, my theory is that John never comes back to the present. Uh, I think he's yeah. I could see I could see it either way. I think yeah. he stays in the future. And I think there's every possibility that he and his mother are never on screen together ever again. Uh, yeah. Which would have been a wild way to make a TV show, uh, you know, after yeah, that. No because, kidding. again, from what I've read, it seemed like they, they, they wanted four seasons. And if that's true, we're at the halfway point. At least season count-wise, you know, not episode count-wise, because that first season only got nine. Uh, but we're at the end... One thing that leads me to think that that might have been where we were going is uh, she's got that line she whispers right at the end, and it just makes me feel like we're ne they're never going to see each other again. The, the way the way that whole thing is handled. Yeah, yeah. Like I said I I don't know I could see it either way. Where I was like, there's a chance he just never comes back, or he comes back episode one, season three by the end. <laughs> I guess I uh, here's why I'm leaning toward that not happening. Now it's possible that at some point he goes back to the present, then winds up in the future again, and it's a different future. But that could have gotten goes back to the future, right? Yeah, that could have gotten really convoluted. Um, yeah, that the, is true. Because like for him, if he has to live in the future for any amount of time, now the future is the present, even though his mother isn't there. Um, like. I really love the relative present idea in this show that if you're uh, that, that if you're in present day, the future could be anything. And uh, if you come back from the future, 
uh, you are now living in the timeline that counts, and the one that you were in doesn't matter. Uh, and so, or I mean, like, you know, it does matter, because it can influence things, but it, it, it it's, it's, a, it's an alternate timeline. It's like, we play... Uh, future timelines almost like alternate dimensions that different people jump in and out from. And so, again, you get interesting identity questions with that. You get you get really interesting kind of metaphysical questions with that. And once John is in that future, that for him is the future. Now, he's trying to change it. He's trying to, 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 to uh, you know, when he starts you know, sending people back in time, um, like, like, he, like, he wants to, he wants to fix all of that, but, um, that's his chance to be the leader that he knows he's supposed to, and I kind of called that ending, uh, accidentally, so when, because I had this bizarre theory, and I was like, there's no way that's what they do, and I, yeah, you told me I had this theory. I've been waiting to hear it. I'm uh, an hour and a half in. I'm finally going to tell you this theory. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that this is what that, that that this is what they were thinking all along. And I and I and if I'm right, I can't believe that this is what they did. So uh, there is so so just to uh, set this up for everybody, I uh, you you get to the end and uh, John Connor time travels and uh, Sarah stays behind. And he goes into the future, and he is met by uh, Uncle Reese, who doesn't recognize him. And uh, nobody in the future has heard of John Connor yet. Uh, which leads me to believe that uh, this is his chance to become John Connor. And he, the first two seasons are all, and T2 and everything, are all his proving ground. And he's actually been through all of his training already. And now he has to lead the resistance. My theory in season one is that teenage John Connor is John Connor. That uh, he is going to make a time jump and have to lead the resistance behind closed doors. And I, uh, because he's played as almost like a Wizard of Oz character, kind of figure. Where nobody, like, hardly anybody ever sees him. And nobody really knows what John Connor looks like. They just all follow him. That's, that's a whole thing. And I'm like, maybe part of that's because he's actually a kid. And he doesn't want too many people to know that he's a kid. And what led me to think this is, is that there's a scene. Uh, we, we, do, we do these flashbacks that are actually flash forwards. Because it's Terminator. Uh, <laughs> It, and, and one of the first ones is with, I, w I want to say it's with Cameron. And we do a shot where uh, we, we're in the future, and uh, she's one of the only people that actually goes and sees John Connor. And uh, she walks into the room in the future, and you get a glimpse of teenage John Connor. And it cuts to back to present day, and we see a paralleled shot of John, like, looking at her. And I think the scene is wanting to dupe you into thinking that it's just doing, like, a cool, cute thing where it's, like, you don't actually know what John looks like, but she is looking at the present-day John, but, in, but, but, like, the audience is, is seeing that actor right then, but it's not really... I think it literally is that. Like, like, or I was thinking then, it literally is that. We, like, like she sees teenage. They, they actually have given us this huge reveal and played it like a cute transition, thinking that maybe you won't realize they just revealed something to you. When you get to the end of the series, teenage John Connor is in the future talking to Reese, who says, who are you? And he says, John Connor, he says, well, you're going to be famous. And I'm like, I called it. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. And when I sent you that message the other day, I hadn't finished the show yet, and I'm like, I've got this wild theory. It's probably insane, <laughs> and and like, uh, because I thought I was reading too much into a transition. I don't think I was. I think they revealed that like four or five episodes in. Oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah, that's kind of where I was leaning to with that finale, where I was like, there's a chance he goes back, but that's probably what they were getting at. I think that's such a cool idea. That I, uh, it's not John having lived through everything, and I uh, then getting to the resistance, and I uh, because the thing is in, and I realize that we keep changing different futures, right? But I, uh, when when you, 
you also still get the sense that the universe keeps kind of coalescing more or less to what it always was. Like, we keep we keep staving off Judgment Day, but it always happens. We keep trying to stop the machines from getting created, but it always... There are inevitable things. John Connor is also inevitable. Um, the, like, like, you have a, you know, really, really tragic, horrifying inevitability, and then you have the savior of mankind inevitability, and that's, and that's John Connor. And if you uh, get to... If John lives all the way through all of that, when you get to that future, like a lot of people are gonna already know who he is and that he's supposed to be really important. And this is the only way you could have a John Connor that everybody didn't already know was supposed to be the savior of mankind before he did anything. Like that's how you do that. Yeah. And I like the idea that John's the only one who knows about the future. Like, nobody else there has done the time travel thing or dealt with Terminators. Like, so, part of the reason that he is th that that leader is because of his knowledge. is because of all of these things that he's already found out about the future. It makes a lot of sense that he would have to do a time skip for any of that to make sense. Yeah, well, yeah, and he's already dealt with so many Terminators. <laughs> <laughs> all those Termo freaks. <laughs> the Termo freaks! <laughs> anyway, that was my last big point. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm amazed that you called that. That's me that's too. Because <laughs> I thought I just read into a transition. I didn't think I called anything. <laughs> I'm really glad that I didn't save that reveal for later because then I would just be like, you know, spewing my crazy theory forever, and we'd never know. <laughs> we still kind of don't know, but yeah, yeah, who knows with some of the stuff? Like, we don't know what's going on with like the T1000 or. We're we're Any never gonna stuff. know whose side she was on. Like, yeah, she she builds John Henry to fight Skynet. She says, but you never really know what her allegiance is. Yeah, yeah. Like you get the scene where she, <laughs> the one awkward scene with her CGI where she protects <laughs> the Goners. Yeah, that was pretty dope. giant wall. <laughs> Uh, it would have been like an X-wing too. It's just it, the whole scene's weird. It would have been better if she didn't talk. If the mouth didn't move, it's more okay. Yeah, I'm like, it would it would maybe be okay if it didn't have a face. <laughs> yeah, she looked like a Doctor Who angel if it was made out of metal. Yeah. Yeah, just that whole shot. I was like, no, you have made it this entire time. <laughs> And I've been like, wow, it's amazing that they can do this on a TV budget. You get to the last episode, it's like, oh, you went a little too far with that one. Yeah, like, every time she pulls her finger out and murders somebody with her finger, like, that always looks good. Yeah, and I think there's a scene early on, too, where she does, like, where she comes up from the floor, like, yeah. she does in T2, and, like, that looked good. There's, like, a weird scene where she's, like, swimming around as an eel. That looked fine. <laughs> But then she's a wall with a face, and that's where I draw the line. Yeah, I, I won't have any of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, and I think the first scene in season one has like a bit of uh, like awkward CGI, but then it ends up being a dream, so it's like a little bit better. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, because that's that's the big dark fate thing. Is the show opens on a Terminator walking in and gunning down uh, John Connor, but it ends up being a dream because they realize that would be a poor choice. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of that, even though this show doesn't finish and we don't know how it would have ended, and yeah, it could have crashed and in, in burned by the end, but I got the sense we were watching a novel on screen that they actually were writing toward an ending, and I don't think that would have happened. I think it, it, it uh, probably would have had a solid ending. Um, yeah, I think so. Or I would be really surprised if it was just god-awful, you know? Like, I, 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 I just I came to really trust the show. Does it, does it make the sequels that you don't like worse? Does it make him yeah. a little bit worse? <laughs> yeah, especially like I don't know. Uh, like, there's just different things. Like I said, where I'm like, ah, that's that's in the sequels. Like uh, Genesis does the whole moving forward in time, except this show, you know, they go back like four years before Judgment Day, and that they go like four minutes before Judgment Day. 
and it's you know (laughs) 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 so i got on that one yikes (laughs) Like I said earlier, it just it kind of hurts my feelings when people are like, "Oh God, this franchise is is too played out. There's nothing left to do with it." It's like, no, nah, you just got to be creative and not just pander to nostalgia. Well, that's always been my thing. As I'm like, it's it's so exactly like Star. With, it's like as soon as somebody makes a Star Wars thing. movie, that's just the same thing you've seen before. People start saying there's nothing, there's no stories left to tell in Star Wars. And I've been reading Star Wars Legacy lately, going, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk over well, you. Well, then even like we got Salvation, which was different, and then like that's not great. And the big thing from Salvation that is kind of in the show is you have like the one person who is a Terminator that doesn't know they are. Yeah. And we kind of get that with Cameron with the amnesia plot. Kind of, but it's a little bit different, right? Oh, no. Like, it is different. Yeah. It just reminded me of that. That Yeah, that's fair. Like, when she has got that personality, she doesn't realize she's a Terminator. But she is a, a Terminator that, you know, she's a Terminator most of the time. But, oh, yeah. Like, normally she's a regular Terminator. It was just really in that one episode. That also made me wonder if... All of the Terminators are based on real people. I had that thought too. Yeah, and then like I don't know, they must be. I would think it's not like they're just pulling out random uh, like personas, I guess. And it would make more sense to have a Terminator if it's a like you know an infiltrator to have it look like somebody. And I think with season three, we would have gotten more of that role because Summer Glau like clearly isn't a Terminator in that end scene. What would have happened is John falls in love with her, with the I uh, uh, Allison Young, yeah. with yeah, with the character that I uh, that Cameron is is based on, and then she gets killed, and then. He can't stand that she is dead, so he makes a Terminator based on her, and then that's what he sends back. And it's like the cyclical thing where, like, he falls in love with the Terminator first, but he has to make the Terminator because he's in love with it. Like, that's what they would have done, right? Yeah, most likely. And, and then, then, like, and, and then also like it would have been to, weird to make sure she's like naked, <laughs> like on top of her at the end of season two. Here's what's great about that: it's <laughs> so awkward, and it feels so typical TV. But again, they keep kind of turning stuff on its head. Where like, it's it's not sexual at all, even though it seems like it's going to go there. And then you think about it, and then you go, "No, it was completely sexual the whole time." That's yeah. that's what's so great about that scene is like because you've got that look on his face where it's like that's the moment where he goes yeah she's a robot but I'm still like really into her well and like everything they say is a double entendre and that's <laughs> yes yeah there's a lot of great innuendo there and I uh, and also it feels like she's teasing him a little bit because even though she's still not fully understanding how human beings work together, there's this wonderful subtle evolution with her where as time goes on, she's getting like like uh, like relationships more and more like like uh, incrementally, right? You can't tell me at that point in the series that when she takes her top off and says, get on top of me, that she doesn't know what's going through his head right then. You can't tell me that. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's like that whole scene uh, earlier on, too, where she's trying to convince him not to go uh, with Riley anymore, and she, like, jumps in his bed. And is... Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Like, she, no, she definitely knows in that moment. Do you think, I, I, I forgot about this, too, do you think that at the beginning of this show that she is a little bit too good at convincing people that she's a regular person? It I've feels heard like that complaint. Yeah, they write her differently in that first episode until you know that in, until uh, John knows that she's a Terminator, and then from then on, she's like Data, where she doesn't know how to act around people. But when she first meets him. She's a very typical teenage girl, and, like, she's not able to turn that on again. Yeah, yeah, it is probably a little a little weird. But Where it's, like, I, just kind of sort of for the audience's benefit, so that we'll be surprised that even though all of the advertising <laughs> for that show was Summer Glau's The Female Terminator. Yeah, so when she shows up and does, like, the come with me if you want to live, you're supposed to, like, do the Home Alone shocked face. <laughs> 
Yeah, and that's of course a place where they have the the obvious obligatory line, but they don't do it constantly, and they get it out of the way pretty quick. And I liked her delivery of it. Um, yeah, I like that. Uh, the closest we get to uh, Austin La-, La Vista is Austin Luego. La- La- that was pretty great. Oh yeah, that made me laugh from the last episode. I, I was going to ask you if you caught that. I did because I was like. I uh, for a second I thought she said it and then I was like wait a minute <laughs> she goes off to the way and it was really awkward like it was like like she does a lot it was just the 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 most inopportune time to say that like it was completely inappropriate hasta luego <laughs> yeah yeah no kidding <laughs> um it's it's a wonderful show and it just hurts my feelings that it's it feels so irrelevant going back to it. Yeah, yeah, like I said at the beginning of this, like, I feel like this probably would have been my second favorite Terminator, uh, like, just thing, but it kind of isn't, because it's not complete, so it's just bumped down to third. <laughs> and it's really easy to kind of guess at all the cool directions it would have gone, like, it didn't feel anything like it was out of steam, like, if anything, it was just finally kind of ramping up. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I've heard apparently the creator thinks that the ending of the show is very much a, ah, it's an ending or it could work, like, moving forward, which, I mean, I don't get, but... <laughs> that seems like a, a kind of a denial thing for a creator to say, where it's like, I really want this to be a complete piece. It's just not, there's too many threads that are open. Yeah. Is the problem with that. I don't mind the idea that this show, were it plotted differently, might end with John transports the future and now he's going to be the leader of the resistance. Uh, that is that is a fine place to leave this show. That as an ending yeah. makes sense to me. Um, not knowing what the T-1001 was planning. And uh, how exactly she was going to use the Turk to fight the uh, to fight Skynet and all of that is, well, is like too open ended. To chase like John Henry and stuff and get Cameron's like chip back and all that stuff. Like it, that's not an ending. That's a cliffhanger. Yeah. The yeah, John like, thing could be an ending. That's not an ending. Yeah. Yeah, no, like, it definitely wasn't intended as an ending <laughs> in that episode. But, you know, that's the unfortunate thing with this show. Well, anything else you want to talk about? Um, No, I think that's... I, <laughs> I think we pretty much covered everything, even if it wasn't super uh, linear. <laughs> we were kind of all over the place, but, you know, it's Terminator, so I, I, I feel like we were... It doesn't have to make sense. It's time travel. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's this review. We were just very, we were very thematically appropriate in our choice of structure for this review. You know, it's just just as convoluted as the time travel in Terminator. <laughs> this was actually just a giant parody of uh, Genesis. Yeah, we we planned it all along. <laughs> See, what you don't yeah. realize is we actually mapped out exactly how all over the place we would be <laughs> and what order in which the. Uh, <laughs> completely out of order <laughs> we did uh, the red letter media science man like explains uh genesis video yeah. but for this video Ex- exactly well anyway i hope you guys enjoyed uh our rambling on about uh sarah connor chronicles i really wish that we could do this again with the rest of the show but there will never be the rest of the show and it just hurts my feelings which again is the reason that i never went back to it uh because i didn't want to have this experience and now i've had it and i'm glad that we talked about it uh doing our terminator series uh the rest of these we'll get to talk about things that finished whether they were good or not so uh, that's great well i mean everything after this is or i guess after two or no after three is the start of a trilogy that never happens so. oh i'm wrong yeah no that's that's true <laughs> i mean we don't really want to see them <laughs> <laughs> that yeah that's true if we don't get the endings of those it's fine because they're not great i mean i i think salvation was more than salvageable oh definitely i don't mind salvation but i haven't seen it in years yeah uh, it's it's a, a misstep to be sure, but if that second movie had been made, there was plenty to, to build on with it. Uh, it's just not a great movie on its own. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. 
Also, and we it, said at least this it's different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, 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 yeah, yeah. It's at least not trying to do this premise again. And and also, again, this show proved that this premise has legs. So now it's even worse when things try it and go. We have to be the exact same movie again. Um, we we talked about this when we did the commentary for Terminator One, but uh, I just want to reiterate that I think the future of Terminator should be on television. Uh, I think I don't mean try to finish this show now and i don't mean just because that's a terminator just that's show. weird and i don't mean this premise again uh i mean like salvation as a tv show is i think the next thing you do yeah no i agree i'd like to see that just the you know the the, the future of the resistance um and the uh you know, you know dystopian stuff post-apocalyptic stuff remains really in I uh, I think people would watch that show. Yeah, well, and uh, I mean, I think this show holds the look that the first two movies did. Um, obviously, Salvation doesn't, but um, I think the show at least proved that you can do it on a TV budget. Yeah, I still don't get why Salvation didn't have skulls, but what's well, because it wanted to be Mad Max? Oh, well, it could have been. <laughs> Terminator. That's a notion. Um, that's also iconic and also in the title. I don't. I don't understand. Well, anyway, everybody, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we will see you again in the not too distant future for a Terminator Two commentary. I kind of wish I had watched T Two again before doing this because uh, it's been a while. I mean, I know that movie okay, uh, but it informs this show so much. It's gonna be really weird sitting down and watching that again. <laughs> After watching this entire show, when we when we go back in time to that, <laughs> right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, and and that will have to do linearly because we'll be watching it. I don't know. We could find a way. We could recut <laughs> that film. Everybody, press play now. Don't 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 even bother with it because it's in, it's in a completely different order. Anyway, we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. I'm Captain yeah. Logan. And Bye, everyone. That was the day ghost. Bye, folks.